What's the best part of being a martial artist? It's not the ability to kick someone else's ass because you don't know how to do that. It's not joining a community of like-minded individuals because none of your friends like you. The best part of being a martial artist is buying new gear. Buying new gloves is a bit like opening presents on Christmas Day, except you don't have to behave for them and you can actually use them to do very bad things to people. I've been buying MMA gloves for a very long time. I was buying MMA gloves back when they were called grappling gloves or kickboxing gloves. I bought all sorts of shapes and different designs. And these MMA spar gloves from Combat Corner are my favorite gloves of all time. In the interest of full transparency, I wanna let you guys know Combat Corner is not paying me to make this video. Yes, I am a brand ambassador for Combat Corner, meaning if you pick up a pair of these gloves for yourself, I can get a kickback for that. But regardless of any of that, I would recommend this glove to anybody. If you're serious about mixed martial arts or self-defense training, you need to get yourself a pair of these gloves. I would say that even if Combat Corner was charging me to make this video, that's how much I believe in this glove. But Combat Corner, pay me. The design of an MMA glove is pretty self-explanatory. It's not a boxing glove because obviously it's much smaller and the palms are open, but it's also a little more protective than not having anything on at all because there's padding on it, right? Well, no, because actually back in the day, MMA gloves kind of sucked. This right here is what 99% of MMA gloves look like. They're spread out in the fingers and there's almost no padding on the knuckles. And that's fine for UFC fighters, although Really, the glove design for the UFC is pretty atrocious and we could talk about that in another video. However, this glove design has a lot of problems on its own. First of all, I really don't like the wrist support, or should I say the lack of wrist support on this thing. Because of how high up this goes on my hand, I don't actually feel like my wrist is supported at all when I strap this thing up. I feel like I can move my wrist any sort of way and there's no protection happening to my wrist. Which, yes, I'm a big advocate of proper punching technique, which means I should know how to throw a punch without shattering my wrist, but if I'm gonna pay money for these things, I want them to protect me at least somewhat. Secondly, let's talk about the padding on this. Yes, as you can see, these gloves are pretty old, but even then, there was never that much padding on there. When I connect with something while I'm wearing these gloves, I can feel it reverberate all the way down my hand. And no, that really doesn't have anything to do with the way I punch. It has to do with the fact that there's no padding on these gloves, which yes, is something you need to consider when you're talking about bare knuckle punching. Obviously you can't go full force without risking breaking your hand. But when I'm throwing thousands of punches in any given class and I can feel every single punch, that tells me these gloves are not very protective. This padding is padding in name only. There's not really enough of this that I would feel comfortable punching someone else in the face. Again, in terms of training partners, not opponents. But the big issue that I have with these gloves is the way they don't support my hand making a fist. My fingers are so spread out in these gloves that my natural resting position is not a fist. It's a finger poke, which is fine if you're studying Krav Maga or you're John Jones. But since I'm talking about training, as in working with people that you see at least two times a week, I don't want to be poking them in the eyes every time we're sparring. This glove is a staple of mixed martial arts training, but just because we've always done it a certain way doesn't mean we have to do it that way. Enter the Combat Corner MMA Sparring Glove. This glove design addresses pretty much every issue I've ever had with an MMA glove. As you can see, it forces my hand to rest in this kind of L-shaped position where it's much easier for me to make a fist and punch my opponent and much harder for me to poke him in the eyes. Also, there's a lot of thumb support happening here. My thumb is attached to the wrist, attached to the palm, meaning I'm less likely to jam this thing and break my thumb off of my body like I would be with the other solid MMA gloves. If you asked me if I felt comfortable punching someone else in the nose with this glove, I would say absolutely, I'm always comfortable punching people. But I'm more comfortable now knowing that I'm less likely to break my training partner's nose if I make a little too much contact. There's a lot of really tightly packed but very spongy padding happening in these gloves, meaning I'm not very likely to hit so hard that I'm gonna make contact all the way down to my actual knuckle, and this gets to work as an airbag that cushions against my partner's face. This is one solid piece of padding from the back of my hand all the way to the front of my fingers. Meaning I can throw straightforward boxing punches, I can throw back fists, I can throw ridge hands, whatever I wanna throw. There's a lot of this here that not only protects me, but also protects my partner. And I can already hear some of you. If you want that much padding on your hand, why don't you just put pillows on? Mm, 
<clears throat> that expression makes me so mad because it's usually uttered by people who have zero idea how to actually punch and are the worst kind of training partner. The kind of person who says something like that doesn't want to take a fight, but they do want to beat up their training partner. Dude, I'm trying to go to work tomorrow. You're trying to go to work tomorrow. There's no benefit to us breaking our noses open while we're training. You're not gonna take a fight and you're not a badass. We're just trying to have fun training and learning something useful. But that being said, the better your equipment is at protecting you and your partner, the closer you can get to 100% striking and throwing. Meaning, the closer you get to having pillows on your hands means the harder you actually get to punch. Now, a pillow isn't actually the best at protecting you and your partner, but that's a glove design thing. We're not gonna talk about that now. The point is, if you think minimalist glove design reinforces power punching, you either A, don't understand the benefit of having good protective gear, or B, you're just an asshole. However, I don't think there's a one size fits all when it comes to martial arts training gear. I like training in the MMA spar glove. It allows me to strike pretty confidently and grapple pretty confidently. And for our purposes in combat self-defense, it allows me to train open-handed with fists and with a weapon. This right here is a tactical flashlight. This is my analog for knife fighting in training. This is also just my everyday carry, but we can talk about that in another video. This can simulate having a knife, having a pen, or having a flashlight. So if you're doing any kind of training that involves going from closed fist striking to open palm striking or loaded striking, then yeah, the MMA glove is pretty useful, but it doesn't have to be the only tool you use. I don't let my new students train in MMA gloves until I'm confident they know how to throw punches and they know how to catch punches. Because when people first start catching punches, they end up wanting to have their fingers opened up like this, and if your partner doesn't aim right, they catch thumb, catch a finger, whatever. It's much harder to train efficiently when you're only training in MMA gloves, unless you have a good, strong foundation. So before I let my students train in the MMA glove, I first get them comfortable with a boxing glove, because this thing is way more forgiving than an MMA glove. In fact, for me personally, when I train with my students, nine times out of 10, I don't even bother making a fist because the design of this glove naturally contorts my hand to a fist shape. And by leaving my hand loose inside the pocket, I'm minimizing the contact that I'm making when I train with my students. So while they're busy flinching and cowering away, I'm pretty much taking good care of them. The boxing glove is a lot more intuitive for a newbie martial artist. But again, that's not to say they shouldn't ever get to use the MMA sparring glove. If we're doing something that involves a little more transition from striking to grappling, maybe I'll have them put on the MMA glove. But when it comes to learning punching technique, they're either going to learn bare knuckle on some kind of pad, or they're gonna put on the boxing glove and work this way. And by the way, you still have plenty of ability to grapple while you're wearing the boxing glove. I tell my students constantly, you don't need individual finger control to throw somebody. All you need is the ability to close and open your hand. For the most part, that's all you're gonna be doing in judo or clinching. You don't need individual finger control. You need the ability to move your hand as one giant unit, which you can totally do in the boxing glove. Now, this might sound expensive because I'm talking about buying two different pairs of gloves, but if this is something you're serious about, it's a worthwhile investment. And like I said in the beginning of the video, there's nothing more fun than unboxing your gloves and putting them on for the first time than punching someone right in the mouth. So there you have it, you guys. There was my review of the Combat Corner MMA Sparring Glove. Like I said, this is my favorite glove design in the world. Not just MMA glove, but boxing glove, baseball glove, whatever. This for me is the epitome of martial arts training gear. If you wanna pick up a pair for yourself, there's a discount code down in the description. That code is only good for the first week that this video is live, meaning you need to get your gloves now. But all that being said, the theme of today's video was not just reviewing the combat corner gear, but the importance of having variety in the training gear you use. Sometimes you want to use the open palm glove. Sometimes you want to use a closed palm boxing glove. And sometimes you need no glove at all. The thing to remember is that you are using the gear. The gear is not using you. So be willing to adapt and use new things to suit your needs. All that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you feel like you learned something, and if you're looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports with the reality of self-defense and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please be sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. This has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done, and I'll see you next time. Boom,